This episode is all about getting our brand new event dome ready for our very first events. So when you last saw the event dome, we just built the base, we'd built the structure, we'd pulled the cover over, and the next job was to get the flooring sorted. So we ordered the flooring like weeks and weeks and weeks before, had no idea it was a really long lead time. So when um, poor Jonathan came to have a look at it, he, all he saw was the breeze blocks. He had no idea like what the dome was gonna look like or anything. So we ordered it and just said, this is the size of it, this is what we need. We had no idea when it was gonna turn up and then it was a big shock when it did and we were not ready at all. So it all starts with the floor going down in a total panic. Okay, so crazy chaos. The um, carpet fitters, you're gonna be, I'm gonna be filming you, is that all right? <laughs> um, have come to fit the new flooring in the dome and we weren't prepared at all. My poor mother-in-law has just been roped into hoovering the whole dome so they can do that and I need to quickly unscrew all of the anchor bolts so they can get the flooring underneath it. So we're gonna do that quickly now and then hopefully they'll be able to lay the floor. Right to rain. I oh, know, it is, it's not good. Okay, so we did the world's quickest hoover and unscrew and I'm hoping the dome doesn't go anywhere because it's now not at all anchored to the ground and may just fly away. Luckily it's not too windy. So uh, yeah, we've just gone for like a wooden look vinyl. So hopefully it'll be alright, it'll be easy to clean. So now that the floor is all down, we need to screw these back in and we need to get it right really because um, it wasn't really very right when we did it before. We had a whole load, like all these were like really off. It's like that's really far off. So we need to try and pull this side in a bit. Why are you throwing frisbees in here? I'm gently with the dome. So that's the plan now. It's a, a team effort. It's really late, the kids should be in bed, but we need to get this done in case the wind picks up. So today is one of our first events, which is a 70th birthday afternoon tea. So there's gonna be about 30 people. I was panicking about chairs because um, we didn't have enough. And so I found on Facebook Marketplace these like proper wedding banquety chairs. So I went and picked up 40 of them. Thankfully, the van, I could get like 24 chairs in there, so I only had to do two trips and it wasn't far up the road. Um, so we've got all our chairs and then Brian's mum and dad have just put all the bunting in. Um, so that looks nice and festive. But it's still quite echoey in here. It is, you need acoustic clouds. I know. Okay, right, well let's, we'll get cleaning and set up. So here's our first afternoon tea in the dome. Um, I haven't filmed any of it, it's been totally manic because um, I can't, like, getting everything up here is a total nightmare because obviously kitchen's right down there. Dome is right up here. And um, I had to then put the urn in. Obviously we haven't got anywhere, we haven't got the generator yet so I couldn't plug the urn in. So the urn was just boiled and then we just put it out here because I ran out of room. It's all a total nightmare. So I'm now gonna quickly go and do some. The afternoon tea was such complete crazy chaos that I didn't take any or more video apart from these couple of little snippets on my phone. It was a resounding success. I just need to streamline how we get everything up and down from the kitchen to the dome. I managed to clear up after afternoon tea, that was all good. And now, the two days later, we have this going on. So this is our first corporate event. Um, so my chairs are coming in very handy. And um, this is freelance mum, so you may have seen Faye on our last video. Um, she's, it's all about networking with kids basically. And so this is her, oh, I've got my gubbins to put the gubbins table. So you can put all your business cards and that sort of thing. Um, and then we're gonna have guest speakers in here basically. So it's all set up ready for that. Um, I've got Delia taking some photos for me and hopefully it will all go well today. Here are some of the professional photos from the day. They were all taken by Charlotte Tolhurst and they are absolutely beautiful. Um, we did have an icebreaker to start with and then we did a net walk around the field, which was really lovely. We had some guest speakers. We had lunch provided by me. That was a little bit stressful, but catering always is. 
and then um, more guest speakers and then home in time to pick the kids up from school. So it was an absolutely lovely day. The weather was perfect and everyone gave such amazing feedback about the event dome. After our first couple of events in the dome, we realised that we needed to sort the acoustics out. Um, the echo is kind of really off-putting when you're trying to have a conversation. So we've got options of either buying the insulation kit, but we kind of still wanted that feeling of space in there. So we have come up with um, acoustic clouds, which I think we've talked about before. And basically I have researched them and they were gonna, if we'd have bought the acoustic clouds, it's gonna be like 250, 300 pounds per cloud. Whereas I think we can make them, right? So I've just ordered a load of like dense foam and some wadding and some fishing line. And I'm gonna have a go at making them myself. So here is my foam. This piece is 60 inches by 20 inches. I don't know why we're doing inches. We normally do centimeters in the UK, but anyway. Um, so I've got five pieces that size. And I've also got this wadding, which I'm gonna wrap the foam in to make it look more like clouds. I've had a go at carving one into a cloud shape. So I'm gonna keep this one this size because I want a nice big one to get the very top. And then with the rest of them, I'm probably gonna cut them in half or in thirds or maybe do one other big one, I'm not sure. So I've got like maybe about seven or eight or I think you need an odd number. So maybe probably seven clouds. And I've just literally been carving them with a bread knife. Um, and it doesn't really matter that it's all a bit lumpy because it's all gonna get covered by the wooding. Um, then I need to get a piece of ply and put that over the top and then be able to thread the fishing wire through and hang them from the nodes on the top of the dome. So that's what I'm gonna do now. I'm gonna finish making all my clouds and I'll come back to you when I've done all my shapes. Here is my cloud stack and there's that bigger one over there. So what I've done is I've measured sort of roughly the, the a square or rectangle of roughly the size of the cloud and I've written it on here 55 by 35. So I've done my cutting list and now I need to go and find, I'm gonna use like thinnish bits of ply, um, stick it on there and then wrap my wooding on and staple gun it on. Everybody calls me a hoarder because I don't throw anything away. But this is the reason why. All these offcuts apply are gonna be perfect to back those clouds. And so I just keep whatever timber we've got. So like our carport in here is just full of, of kind of all offcuts of timber that we've used, bits of ply. There's no point throwing it away because you just might one day need it like today. I'm just going to glue my piece of ply onto my cloud now. So I'm just using um, adhesive, contact spray adhesive. So you just have to spray. One side and then spray that one. And then wait two minutes and then put it on and it sticks pretty well. Now we've got all the ply stuck to the clouds. Lucy and Brian are um, drilling holes to feed through the fishing line. So here's one we did earlier, or they did earlier. Um, so Annabelle and Brian were doing this, basically feeding the fishing line through a hole around the clouds so we can then attach them. So we've got four caught in each, one in each corner basically. It could still be sticky, yeah. So now Annabelle and I need to do the wadding. So we've got a few tools and bits with us and we're gonna start wrapping these all in white wadding. This seems to be working. A mixture of hot glue gun, contact spray adhesive and staple gun. So I've been sort of staple gunning this. I'm trying to keep the cloud shape, but it's not, it's not that easy. So staple gunning it to the fly. All the clouds, I've just got clouds everywhere, are done. So now we need to hang them. Some very kind friends have lent us some scaffolding. Um, and then, so I'm gonna take all the bunting down first. Um, this is an echo test now. Like this, this is how echo it is. Clap. Yeah, so that is the echoiness, like if we stood right in the middle, when it's very, very noisy and echoey. Like yes, let's hang the clouds and see if it makes a difference. Fly 
in your ear. Oh, okay. There's a lot of flies up there. There's so many flies literally in my head. Well, they're all attracted to you because you're sweating so much. So, I'm literally, it's dripping. Well, just be careful up there, please. So, so I'm going with this one next. It needs to be more. Like that? More. Like that. Yeah, like that. Okay. That works. So I think I need to get this one. So if somebody can very, very, very gently push me. Okay. Hello. No, no. Hello. No. So we've been making through this with the cloud. Um, there's a few. Well, I'm just worried that I've not got enough really. Um, I feel like it's making a difference, but I don't know. Uh, we're gonna hang the bunting up as well, but um, it's also the flies are a bit of a pain. Um, but I think I've got the technique down now, and um, then once they're all up, we'll do a little sound test and see if it's made any difference at all. Clouds are now up and Brian thinks it's made no difference. I think it has made a difference. I can still hear an echo, so this is a test number two, but I do think it is an improvement. We're gonna now put the bunting back up because that also makes a difference. Um, and then I don't know what else to do. Clouds and bunting are done. There's still quite an echo, but I don't think it's as bad unless you stand right in the middle. So, oh, that was weird. It's right here, it's very strange. Let me step away. That was better. So uh, that's as far as we can get for now. We'll see how it goes with the sound healing event that we've got tomorrow night. Um, see how she finds the gongs. And it might be amazing, it might be awful, we don't know. But we'll let you know. So our third and different type of event is Danny's sound healing workshop, which is taking place now. That's why we've been desperately trying to get the acoustic clouds done. We've got some bunting to try and reduce the echo. Um, I've put all the chairs around because I think that should cut. Oh, kind of help as well. Um, and she has set up in here with um, a kind of meditation session for eight people. And um, this is Danny. Um, to talk us through this. So what's, what are all, what so do you do? So these are the quartz crystal bowls, which are the main piece of the show, as it were. Yeah. Um, so when we start a session, we do some breath work with a guided meditation just to get people to calm down. And then you introduce these. Amazing, we want to be there. <laughs> and so it's about an hour, is it? About 40, 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah. oh, okay, amazing. Um, and so we've got a couple of, well, one of our guests is coming, I think, yes. um, Adele. She's going to come down and, and have a go. Um, and hopefully it will be a regular thing. We'll see how it goes because we don't know how the acoustics are going to sound and it's gonna be lovely. how people are going to react to the dome. So, um, a bit <laughs> yes, we are in. <laughs> It's been 34 degrees today, so it's roasting. Um, we're now 7.30 in the evening, so it has cooled down a little bit. I don't know what it is though, it's 31 still, I think. Um, so we, ha we are experiencing a heat wave in the UK at the minute, which is like unheard of. We've never had such a dry August. So um, we're hoping this will work, and we're hoping it's um, a lovely evening for everybody, which I'm sure it will be. And um, yeah, we'll let you know how it goes. Danny said the sound healing went really well. In fact, she's booked two more for September and October, so I'm really excited about that, and I'm planning on joining them for September for a little bit of, uh, you know, relaxation, and when the kids have got back to school and the site's a bit quieter. So next up is the first birthday party. So um, Shona, his, Ethan's mummy, has been in and decorated the dome with lots of pretty kind of first birthday bunting. Um, and also, it looks really good. Um, so I need to bring in another table over here. We're just getting the soft play in, so I've moved the soft play from the studio. So that's all in the back of the van here. 
So um, we just need to get all the soft play in and um, hopefully we'll be set up pretty quick. And so here we are all set up. Everyone's just arriving now. And um, yeah, it's all looking good. First birthday party went down really well. Um, everyone loved it. Everyone had a little wander around the site, which was really nice because we had guests leaving today and then only guests arriving tomorrow. So it means that we had a bit more breathing space. So far the event space is working for us. Obviously all these little tiny bookings are, are not like, you know, anything going towards the cost of the build of it. Um, but really it's an extra space for us. It's all working towards my 40th birthday party, which is what I'm really excited about. And hopefully it will just be a really useful space for us in the future. So yeah, if you have any questions, if you want to come and have a party here or any kind of event, then let us know and we'll see you on the next video.